of an eye near 50. A chance of a few more showers Friday, a blend of sun and clouds near 70. Then partly to mostly sunny for the weekend as high pressure builds in. You'll be mild, about 70 to 75 each day. Jonesboro, that's your KLEK 1 to 2.5 FM weather. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. Kim Jong-un will on Friday become the first North Korean leader to cross to the South since 1953. French President Emmanuel Macron believes Donald Trump is likely to pull the US out of the Iran nuclear deal. At least 13 children have died after a speeding train crashed into a school van at an unmanned crossing in northern India. And in the UK, over 40 companies have signed a pledge to cut plastic pollution over the coming seven years. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the Voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Thursday to you. It's a little wet outside, but I hope that you're still making plans to make today great. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, and I'm your host, Kabila Jones, and my very special guest I'm very, very, very excited to have is Miss Micah Simone Roll. Roll, how are you doing this morning? <laughs> good morning, good morning. I'm doing very, very well. I'm so excited. So many of you may know her um, from being here with us. She was a volunteer and intern um, through Arkansas State University. She's in the radio television department, uh, radio communications. What is the exact <laughs> department called? <laughs> Well, my major is communication studies. Okay. And so with that, I just feel as though communication is the basis of all other majors and I have the freedom to, you know, explore amongst them. Okay. And that's what I've done. I experienced radio here and I did a little dabbling in ASU television wow. as well as, you know, <laughs> writing and so forth on campus. And that's what we're going to get into today. Mm -hmm. Micah has put together a new book called Provoked Expression C. Yes, it's so beautiful. Can't wait to get into it. Um, but before we get into that, we're going to talk about just the backstory and about Micah herself and what led to her writing this book. Everyone that writes a book of some sort, there's always a story behind it. No one just wakes up and says, I want to write a book for nothing. You know, there's always something um, very inspiring behind it. So. I want to get right into it. Um, many of you who may not know Micah, she is a student at Arkansas State University. Um, she'll be graduating soon. Um, but life can be challenging sometimes in, in your age group. And, you know, me and Micah have had conversations about our age difference. And sometimes we go through the same things, but sometimes there is this disconnect because we are at different stages. And so um, I want Micah to share what it's like you know, being a society calls a millennial <laughs> in this day and age and how you, you know, just navigate society as a whole. Mm. <laughs> Life as a millennial is, I think it's, it's challenging, Is it? but it's as challenging as you make it. Okay. Only because it kind of varies depending on the background that you come from and what you allow to influence you. Okay. So I've had very influential people in my life that, you know, have told me, you know, this is right, this is wrong. But even amongst that, you have to figure out for yourself, like, what do I want to be? How do I want to be in life? What impact do I want to make? So okay. I think whenever you figure out exactly, you know, I guess the road you want to take as a millennial, then you'll be fine. When you stick, when you stick to the grounding, your roots and what you believe in and don't waver from that, then it's, it's perfect. Not really. <laughs> it gets better and easier. It gets easier, especially okay. if you influence the people that are around you. Okay. All right. So I can speak on because of things that I know about you. You've always been a writer and a dancer, an overall performer of the arts. And so talk about how those mediums have uh, maybe impacted your life and how they have helped you also to navigate, you know, this society, this world and, you know, being your age and going through college and, you know, the different challenges you face. <laughs> uh, 
The arts have definitely been an escape for me. Um, it was a way of better understanding myself. Okay. When you go through the, the stage of self-exploration, you find out, you know, what you like, what you don't like, and some things, some things you may like about yourself because people tell you that, you know, there are good things and mm -hmm. some things you may dislike about yourself because you get teased for it mm -hmm. or because, you know, you're bullied in school. But ultimately, it's that self-exploration, I think, that brought me to, to dance and to do pageants and to just want better for myself because of the things that I saw that, I, that were actually possible, such as the the Tyra Banks and the Maya Angelou's and mm -hmm. all of that. And I was like, I can do that. I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. And once I stuck to that, then I, I kind of just evolved within myself. It was a secret at first, dancing. I thought it was bad because it felt so good to me. Oh, I thought wow. it was like a bad thing. Like I should not be doing this. Oh, wow. But then my mother found out and she eventually, you know, like, pushed me okay. to do more. <laughs> yes, that's how we mother. I can speak on being a mother. Yes. yes. If we see um, something blossoming within our children, we try to nudge in a you know, gentle way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some children you have to kind of nudge a little harder, but <laughs> we try to push you toward what we feel is your greatness. Mm -hmm. um, and we hope that you appreciate <laughs> are nudging and encouraging and very you know, grateful <laughs> um you just blossom in whatever field you choose to you know go in um we also i forgot to mention you also sing along with dancing and writing um many of you if you listen to kayla k on a regular basis you'll hear um, one of micah's songs play in rotation um i'm sorry i did not put it in rotation today it's okay to play <laughs> after the show um so, but we're going to make sure to get it on sometime today. Okay. <laughs> um, but Micah also sings and, you know, she has some videos on YouTube. So please go check her out. Um, she's just another individual that is trying to make her way in this world. And as she said before, make an impact, leave her footprint um, and inspire others that are coming behind her. Because I always feel that we have a responsibility no matter what we do in life. We have a responsibility to those that are coming behind us to uh, plant some seeds that will eventually grow into something beautiful and bountiful. Agreed, agreed. Um, mm. So I want to talk about your book title, Provoked Expressions. Um, now, I have had a chance to listen to, you know, you recite uh, some of your poetry, maybe not from the book, but recite some pieces. Um, I haven't heard you live, which is a whole different experience, but from what I have heard, you're really, you're absolutely wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so tell us about how the book actually come about. Um, you know, we talked off air about once you decide to put yourself on paper, put your words on paper and share with the world, you become vulnerable because people then start to criticize or judge, yes. you know, your work. <laughs> um, so talk about that. Um, well, the title of the book came about because I was, I was dabbling with a lot of different things uh, amongst writing the book or writing the pieces to go in the book, I wanted to figure out the direction and how to um, how to provoke the readers to read it, actually. Okay. And so I thought about myself and, and what, what created these pieces for me, what made me write poetry. And it was because those expressions that I had written down and I was, you know, trying to convey, you know, on paper were actually provoked in me by other people or myself or my dreams or my outlook on something or my disagreement with another thing. Um, so it just depends on the situ it depended on the situation how the piece came about, but overall the title was because I was provoked initially to write. It was my therapy to get away from the world okay. because of that because of being provoked. And, you know, what you read and though are my expressions and also the expressions of other people through my eyes or through my words, I should say. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, mm -hmm. I would love to read your dedication. I think it's so beautiful. It says, I would like to dedicate my written words to the girls like me and to all that are often unsettled by their natural abilities, to the homeless and to the genuine supporters of entrepreneurship. The dream that you continue to dream means something. That is the vision. That is the silent voice that guides you. That is so, it's short, sweet, simple, but very empowering. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you came to the, 
came up with those words? Um, well, when I was told that I had to do a dedication, since it is my first book, okay. I wasn't aware of these stages. I was told that I had to, you know, dedicate the book to something or someone. And I read other dedications and, you know, they were all ways to their father, or to their mother and so forth. And then I started making a list of everybody that had ever influenced me. Okay. And this list got way too long. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, people are going to stop reading this list before they get to their name. <laughs> so, so I was like, you know what? How do I sum up these people? They, you know, they've supported me. They've, they've encouraged me in more ways than they know. Mm -hmm. Um, I may not have, have even acknowledged them, you know, verbally, um, but they still have influenced me in some way. And so my journey of, you know, having to, a lot of people don't know this, but having to sleep in my car at one point, mm -hmm. it kind of, it kind of grounded me to just, that was the point where I said, I have to leave my mark on this world okay. because if not I'm gonna die in my car no I'm just kidding <laughs> but <laughs> but you know ultimately I needed I needed to put something out there that resonated with other people the entrepreneurs like me the girls like me the the people that are you know oftentimes insecure which is everyone yes everyone is insecure at some point and um that dedication is very important because it doesn't leave anyone out. Okay. Mm. I think if we all take a step back and be real with ourselves and remove the mask, we would see that we all have some insecurities or some things that we haven't dealt with or we choose not to deal with them because they're hard, uncomfortable. And until we do that, we can't successfully move forward in our life. We're going to continue to chase things, to fill those spaces, to cover up. And it's, it's still not helping us in the long run. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, maybe everyone is not a writer, but find some way to express yourself. Um, Micah just so happens to be a writer and a dancer and a singer, among other things. So I am just looking forward to, you know, what else she gives, puts out there, you know, as her life goes on. And I'm so excited to get into this book when I finally take a break from school because we're both in school so we know what it's like yes right now you have to read because you have to finals <laughs> um, but once school is over we're gonna read for fun <laughs> so and later on we're gonna ask Micah if she don't mind to um, you know read a few pieces and okay. you know give some background to those different pieces um, but I still want to talk about again <laughs> another part of the dedication um, to girls like you, when you say girls like me there are many young ladies even now in high school that are facing those awkward moments those I don't know what's gonna happen from day to day or they're walking down the hall with their head down and afraid to just be themselves and be present in their life and can you talk about how you hope to impact those girls? Well, I hope to impact them through, I've always been a big believer on example. Okay. And, um, you know, oftentimes, you know, the old school way is your parents to tell you, do what I say and not as I do, or do what I say and not as I does. However, I hear you, but I see you too. <laughs> Okay. So I'm probably going to try that also okay. while I'm doing what you say. So I've always been a big believer about, you know, putting out the right image. Okay. Because images last longer. Yes. And so um, I've actually worked with young girls. Um, I worked a little bit with Dare Dreamers. Oh. So I was really excited about that. It was kind of awkward because I was, you know, closer to their age. <laughs> so I'm trying to find this balance between mentor and Micah. <laughs> but I've had I've had a number of opportunities to be a mentor to young girls, and I'm very grateful for that. And um, oftentimes I didn't realize my impact on them just by being in the room, just by being present and being encouraging and um sometimes i wish that i had that as a younger as a younger you know okay. adult or as a younger girl um i never had a big sister 
Okay. I was always the bigger sister to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have anybody to run to. Um, this boy doesn't like me and get advice. And, you know, my teacher's doing this. And what do I do about this? So I never I never really had that growing up. Okay. And I always had to be that. So it just came natural to me to mentor. Um, Wonderful. So, yeah. And then you also have shared your gift with... Um, some of the young ladies with the local dance team. Yes, yes, yes. And so they mm-hmm. were a variety of ages. And so what was that like? Were you able were you able to have some sit down talking time? You know, or was mm-hmm. it all dance with those young ladies? The first opportunity I got to um for ministry in dance was for um a church here, okay. a local church. Uh Oh, my mind just went blank. <laughs> Carter Temple CME. Okay. <laughs> so the first time I got an opportunity to mentor through dance was for Carter Temple. And um, alongside that, of course, I would ask them about their grades. I would ask them how everything was going and, you know, just tr- try to get them to lower their guard with me. Okay. You know, to just open up and, you know, be free in a way so that, you know, we can connect and they can also, you know, grow from the from the experience. Okay. And um, after that, I was able to work with um, <laughs> Coach B okay. and her girls. And it was amazing. Like I was I was in there. Um, I was like my jaw was dropping and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to, you know, influence them right now. Like they are beating me at this game. <laughs> it was just wonderful to be around them because they're just like they're just like me okay. at a younger stage. They're they're just like any woman at a younger stage. They're they're trying to figure it out. They're learning. They're growing, and um, I think it's very important to to get to know them and and implement yourself in their life at this stage, okay. because then <laughs> because then they take they take the pieces that you share, okay, and they apply them in some way, even if they don't know it. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. So wonderful. All right. So when you decide to put the book together did you talk with your family and you know what was their feedback um I spoke I spoke to my parents okay about it and I think I had you know spoken to my friends a couple times but it wasn't like in-depth talks okay it was one of those things like I'm gonna write a book yep that's what I'm gonna do (laughs) (laughs) and you know I will wait a few seconds for responses and I was like I wonder how they feel about that (laughs) I'm learning not to do that (laughs) but I would I would always do that yeah I think I'm gonna do that and then you know my dad he would always be like well okay do it you know my dad is a is a big believer on action okay so if I say I'm gonna do something I'm gonna do it it. (laughs) yes and um yeah it was very interesting because when i first wrote the book i was um on what i like to call my senior sabbatical in atlanta okay with my dad i was taking online classes and modeling there and um you know i had finished the book written the book i was ready to print it off the manuscript and approach it you know to a publisher okay well i got hacked and the whole book was erased no ma'am. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I and I, I'm running. Like, Dad, I need your help. Please help me. Anything. <laughs> and his response after, you know, trying several things. I I'm sorry, baby, I can't help you. I can't do nothing. You just gotta write it over. That's one of the hardest things to do as a writer is to recapture the words that you already put down because for those who write no I always feel that my gift is divine. It's not from me alone. And the words that I put down, I can tell when my words are coming from another source, you know, a divine source versus just me trying to force something out mm. because it flows better and it has a a different feeling to it when you read it, you know, read it over and over. So that's a hard thing to do yes. to <laughs> rewrite. <laughs> Depression for a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to a few people that are watching. Mr. Cornelius Moore, the um, Angela's um, Bullard, uh, and Ms. Lachey Robinson says, hey, doll. Hello, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> and thank you all for tuning in to watch. And Ms. Mabel Prunty, um, I want you all to go out and get your hands on this book and share it. You know, um, even though it's written by a young lady, I'm sure there are some young men that will enjoy yes. this book because... 
emotions are not gender biased. No, they are not. <laughs> um, everyone, at some point in time, male, female, faces some of the same issues. They express them differently. However, they experience the same issues. Exactly. Um, so, um... Oh, there was something else I wanted to bring up. It had come to me. <laughs> Please forgive me. Um, but when we come back from our break, we still have about a minute to go. We're going to definitely have Micah get into, you know, some of the pieces in the book and what was the inspiration behind that piece. And, you know, maybe who was it dedicated to or just what inspired all of that. Um, and so I'm sure some people may have asked you, okay, your first book is out. Is there going to be another one? <laughs> Oh, well, I've kind of already started on it. Right. <laughs> so I'm, I don't I don't know if I'm ready for an autobiography yet. I okay. have the title. Um, I'm working backwards on that. Okay. I have the title for the autobiography, but I'm not sure if I'm ready to go there. So I may, in fact, go into writing another poetry book. Okay. But we shall see. And then, um, Ms. Lachey, the book is dropping today. Um, where can they buy your book? Well, it will be available at Barnes and Noble. Bar I'm sorry, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Kindle, Kobo, um, and also I'm supposed to be receiving those links soon. So during our break, I'll check my email to see if my publisher have sent them to me. Okay. Um, they're available in physical, ebook, and audio. All right. So we can't give the price out on air, but we will definitely make sure you get all that information. Soon. I'm glad you told me that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Mrs. Shea says she believes you spoke on your pieces at Ms. Emma's retirement party. She yes, ma'am, I did. She said it was everything. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Mrs. Shea. Um, but don't go away. We'll be right back after these announcements. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on Kayla K, 102.5 FM. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Are you hiding your hurt in your marriage? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Wounds in a marriage, big or small, can be difficult to deal with. And every husband and wife can either choose to cover the festering wounds in their relationship and prevent healing or they can choose to expose those wounds and promote healing. Here are several reasons why a spouse might hide the hurtful wounds. The first is pride. It would be too embarrassing if others knew what really happened. The second is shame. They're already ashamed and don't need to feel worse. Third, pain. Maybe pain is all they've really ever known, so they just live with it. Today, instead of ignoring or hiding your hurt, open it up and start treating it. Only then will the healing begin. Remember, your family first. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K N O M E G A 1908 Com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Meineke of Jonesboro is now Starks Auto Service, a full service auto repair and vehicle maintenance center offering engine and transmission repair, brake service, tires, oil changes, and more. Performed by ASE Certified. Certified Mechanics, the all-new Starks Auto Service, 2813 South Caraway Road in Jonesboro, 870-204-7112. Starks Auto Service, jonesboro.com. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. Tune in to Community Conversations every Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. here on KLEK 102.5 FM. Join host Quabila Jones-Harden 
as she talks to people who are making a difference in the community and learn about the people and organizations that provide services to make Jonesboro a better place. Community Conversations every Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. on KLEK 102.5 FM. Hello, I'm Officer Victoria Evans. I have always had a desire to help others in need and to be an example and role model to young women by encouraging them to never give up on their dreams. My dream was to become a police officer and to serve my community. In 2016, that dream became a reality and it is the most rewarding experience of my life. Now I want to let you know about the same opportunity. The Jonesboro Police Department will conduct testing every month for patrol officers. Applications are available online at jonesboropolice.com or at the Police Department, 1001 South Caraway Work. The Jonesboro Police Department offers a competitive salary, health, and retirement benefits, top-of-the-line training, and most importantly, the chance to make a difference in the Jonesboro community. Join me in making Jonesboro a better place. The Jonesboro Police Department is an equal opportunity employer, and women and minorities are especially encouraged to apply. More information is available at 870-935-5657. The Epic Center, located at 1899 Hasbrook Road, County Road 333, is Jonesboro's newest venue for entertainment for the entire family. They offer an auditorium with theater-style seating for up to 1,100 guests, a large stage, professional lighting and sound, dressing rooms, concessions, and more. Available for weddings, concerts, pageants, birthday parties, showers, and more. Booking and other information is available at Epic Center Jonesboro on Facebook, EpicCenterJonesboro.com and at 870-530-5841. House of Details, located at 3217 Herb Street, Suite C, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, waxing, clear coat protection, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more. With a motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details available via Quentin Bogard at 870-273-5187. House of Details on Facebook and House of Details Jonesboro.com. Did you know that KLEK 102.5 FM is a nonprofit organization? Did you know that you can donate to KLEK 102.5 FM and your donation is tax deductible? Donations to nonprofit organizations such as KLEK can reduce the amount of taxes you may owe the IRS or increase the amount of any potential tax refund. Support your KLEK today. You can donate by calling 870-277-1080, visiting our studio at 1411 Franklin Street in Jonesboro, or on our website, W www.klekfm.org. We at KLEK 102.5 FM are blessed and grateful for your support. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Clavilla Jones, and my special guest is Miss Michael Simone Rowe. Um, look, easy always wants to call you Role. <laughs> <laughs> it's Rowe. My friends call me Role. It's fine. <laughs> All right, and we are talking about her new book, Provoked Expressions, and her story behind the book and her story in general um if you missed the first half you missed you're gonna have to go back and watch it um i want to say good morning to miss chelsea and corey mills uh, for checking in and chelsea says okay michael girl spread that magic i love it <laughs> thank you chelsea thank you chelsea <laughs> um you know, between you and Chelsea, I love to see young ladies just really doing their thing um, and not letting society define who you should be and what you should be and what you should do. You are paving your own path. Yes, you are pulling from the strength of your ancestors, but you're still paving your own path defined by yourself, mm -hmm. not letting others tell you what you're capable of. Yes. Um, that's one thing. Uh, especially, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, take the punch here for people in my generation. We look at you all at your age group and because we don't see things happening the way we think they should be happening. We're quick to be critical and judge and, you know, label the millennials and 
the millennial group um, as entitled or selfish and you know self-serving and things like that but there are a large number of you all who are not like that at all you're very loving and compassionate um, and you want to serve the world serve the people and make a difference so I'm here for that I'm yeah. here for that <laughs> <laughs> and you know you have a little bit of that in every generation the selfishness mm -hmm. the you know self-centered the entitlement I think we all get it from somewhere. Yes. But it's all about, you know, breaking breaking that chain, breaking those stigmas and those yes. stereotypes. So I'm I'm very excited. I, it, you know, once upon a time, I felt like I was born into the wrong age. <laughs> but I'm very excited to be a part of this, this movement that I see going on now. Yes, ma'am. So. I see a lot of social change. And it comes with the generations. Um, there are different things that... Um, spur the social change movements and so mm -hmm. I'm happy to see that people in your generation are taking a stance raising their voices and trying to help create a better quality of life for those around them yes. um, so we shall see what the future holds we shall see it's always good to be <laughs> fearless of death <laughs> yes, that's what I see I see a lot of that that a lot of us are just fearless especially those um, those young people that you know approached the gun violence and mm -hmm. gun laws the way that they did I thought that was very admirable yes ma'am I thought that was something that you know it's, it's 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 not unheard of but today you wouldn't expect that from our young people okay and I, I I appreciate that wholeheartedly just yesterday we had a prayer at the founding I don't mean to get you know no, off ahead. subject um but this young lady that I happen to be acquainted with her name is Dominique and uh she put together this prayer through pretty proverbs okay shout out to them <laughs> through pretty Brianna. proverbs and <laughs> we we prayed at the fountain and it was it was so awesome because it just gave you a, a feeling of relief the chancellor was there and you know we read off a prayer together um reverend oda was there and um it was it was just very great especially within um the climate that we're in our political climate these mass shootings that are happening so close to home the one that just happened in truman so it's very important for all of us to stay in prayer and i just want to say that <laughs> so shout out to the young generation for stepping up again stepping out um, and making a change, stepping, speaking up for social change. Um, we have a few Facebook comments. Miss uh, Lachey says, I need this magic this morning. Well, thank you for the love, <laughs> Lachey. Um, she also says she's definitely an old soul. <laughs> Amen. Um, and then Miss Jennifer Hayes, uh, Salo, Salo, please yes. forgive me. Uh, she says, go, Micah. We are so proud of you. You are making a difference. Well, thank you so oh, much. Thank y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonderful to hear other people a comment whose life you have made an impact on. I must say, um, when Michael first started here, um, we, you know, we felt our way around each other, but we realized that we are kind of kindred spirits. Um, yes. Maybe being born under the same zodiac sign helped. <laughs> um, but we eventually got closer and developed this connection. And I just kind of felt this need to, I don't want to say take Michael under my wing, but you know, or be that mama role, but auntie, mama, whatever, the cool auntie. <laughs> um, just kind of be there. And Micah has taught me a lot, help open my eyes and help me to reshape some of my thinking. And I really appreciate that. So you're never too old to learn. <laughs> never, you know, it's, it's okay to get out of your rut. Get, some people get stuck in a rut, get stuck in their ways and their old way of thinking. And they get stagnant mm -hmm. and their growth is done it because they don't allow themselves to be um, influenced by some other individuals, other things that mm -hmm. they feel is beneath them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So we can all learn from each other. <laughs> I can attest to that. I think we all have feel, you know, some sort of stagnation when things aren't going our way and we're trying to figure out why and we're trying to fix them when really we just should be, just be patient just yes, for a second, take a seat back, <laughs> yes. be grateful for everything that you're able to do and everything that you've accomplished thus far, that you're still alive. Yes, if you're breathing, you can do anything. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to get into a piece. So okay. do you have a piece that you... Would you like to pick it? 
Well, okay. <laughs> um, okay, well. I'll let you pick it based okay. on the title, you know. This one says, Why Red Rose? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I just recorded that one yesterday for the oh. audiobook. Whew. All right. So should I read it and then explain what it, what I'm saying in mm-hmm. it? Okay. Can you hear me? Uh-huh. Okay. Why Red Rose? Why is the red rose long? On the other side of the pillow, we all look forward to dying, giving us something to run from. Understood that yesterday was a privilege, today is under construct, but tomorrow is my enemy because he treats me like a stranger and I've already fallen in love with him. It, the idea, unaware if it'll come through when I really want it to, I have an issue with my issues. Don't say anything, just eat that for a second. I wish we could all just walk around naked. Then maybe the judge of judgment wouldn't be so judgmental. Cause mentally people hold you accountable for the vision of their own that they want you to obtain. Based on moral pits, remarkable how mourning gathers tears but anger won't allow them to fall. How hollow are your clips if and only if you weren't holding guns at all. My bullets aim at your son, verbatim. My bullets aim at your son, the one that rises and sets, trailing upon your hind side in public. You want everyone to see you are a good father, rocking his only pair of J's that you just got him yesterday, sporting his PS3 games. Sooner or later, the attempt to be like you will have become tiresome. Since behind closed doors, you keep him in your blind side. As of this shallow characteristic, you have more shoes than the years in his lifetime. What is the red rose loan? Why is the red rose loan? Why must we have fatherless daughters to accompany our father, the sons? He's hungry, so feed him knowledge. Why must he nibble on leftover attention? This is for all men. I hope that you were listening. My goodness, wow. <laughs> wow. I'm just like... In amazement over here that is I mean I'm visualizing the words and you know I guess that's just who I am I can almost put a picture of course it won't be your picture but the words are creating a picture in my mind and so give us some background on how that poem came to be um when I thought about the red rose I thought about I like to touch a little bit on everything. Okay. So this kind of stemmed toward, you know, fatherhood and the absence that fatherhood, the the effects that ab- the absence of fatherhood creates. Okay. So um, when I spoke about, you know, the bullets aiming at your son, I thought about, I thought about all the, the young men that don't have father figures, that pick up guns, wow. that don't have the ability to, you know, to see a good example of what a man is. Therefore, they go towards the wrong path. And then, like, you you want to be seen a certain way as a father. However, you don't put in that effort, you know, on a one, on one-on-one basis. Girl. So, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very close to home because I know a lot of young men like this. Mm-hmm. And I know that, you know, sometimes you don't have a choice about the cards that you're dealt. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, if you want to shuffle them. Okay. <laughs> so, even, even if we... I, I think the most powerful part of it for me was why must we have fatherless daughters to accompany our father, the sons? Now that spoke to me because, and my father, while I knew him, he wasn't physically present. And a lot of that had to do with him and my mom. And that's another thing I want to touch on. <laughs> Women, if you have men in your, in your children's life that want to be there, let them be. Um, that's another, it's another topic for another day, but I can relate to that because I didn't have my father physically present growing up. I became then a single mother of a son. So that, that really stuck out for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't want that life. Yes. The choices I made, um, the irresponsibilities I, you know, indulged in to get pregnant and not be married. I take fault. I take the blame for that. However, my child still deserved to have two parents. 
his father chose to do other things. So anyway, that's another story it's for okay. another day. <laughs> um, Look where you are. Yes. No. So um, that's really wonderful. I need to get that frame. <laughs> I don't know if you want to pick another one. You said two. <laughs> so let's talk about as you're writing, because you talked earlier about, you know, you had written this book. It got lost somewhere, <laughs> you know, somebody yes. stole it or, <laughs> and so now you're having to start the process all over again. What was that like? You know what? I think it was like three teardrops that came down. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was like three teardrops because my heart wanted to cry, but mentally I was like, I'm unstoppable. And what my dad said to me, he said, um, oh, it's going to be better this time anyway. I just kind of looked at him and I was still a little angry. So I had to go to my room. <laughs> I had to go to my room for a second and I just sat there, you know, let the little three teardrops drop. And I just, I stayed in there. I went into the lab. I incubated myself with nothing but poetry, nothing but research, nothing but, you know, my vision of what I wanted to, what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. And I was like, you know what? I probably wasn't finished with it at first. Wow. I probably this probably wasn't what I was supposed to put out in the first place. Okay. So I had to pray about it, you know, be patient with myself. <laughs> and I think within a matter of a week or two weeks, I had found some of my notes and I was done again. And I was like, Thank you, God. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, God. It, of course it still took, you know, a minute to put it together. Yes. And you know, to get the uh the people to work with me on the cover and the makeup and everything, which I'm very grateful to Mr. William Lawrence and Miss M Moselle Maddox. Uh she is a beast. Shout out to both. <laughs> so, <laughs> the pictures that you see in the book, um my my makeup, all of it was done by Moselle Maddox. The them the thing that I brought to her was Mermaid Mystery. And um, also, Mr. William Lawrence, he assisted me with every picture. And um, I'm very grateful for their talents and for allowing me to, you know, to be a vessel for them to, to just all of us be, come together and to create show this. this. Picture. <laughs> I hope everybody can see. Of course, it's not the same as being in person, but look how, oh my gosh. Yes, that it was beautiful. very close. It was very cold that day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness. Well, you would never tell because you are a champ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I picked out two other pieces. I skimmed through them just a little bit, but um, off of me and 16. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you pick them based off their title? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I skimmed a little bit, but I still want to. They're interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to, I guess, do it the same way. Read it first and then okay. explain. Let's see. Okay. Off me. Just finish me, point blank. My life itches of rage. My nails confused. I feel lost. Try stabbing a knife. Watch it repel energy. Inertia. Was it worth it? The stamina sustaining materialism promotes a generous amount of greed. Combining a trigger finger, feeding a dyslexic nature, my avoiding numbers, dedicated to the top portion of blame. Looking back, I should have graduated early. Tilt your head back, open your mouth, then swallow slowly. Compassion comes from understanding, understanding sometimes the antithesis of personal experience. Proximity appropriated into proximity of circumstance. Insults cause me to chuckle. <laughs> Your judgment makes me laugh. Coins flip over all the time. Always you will. It's a 50-50 chance. Voiced into a 50-50 plan. 50-50 reasons to smile, the exact to frown. 50-50 reasons to stand on a word unspoken. Your word merited by the previous choice. Now pull the trigger to gain such focus. Oh, wow. Okay, yes, please explain. <laughs> <laughs> and Lachey says, Lord, I need, to, I need this book in my life. Yes, Lachey, you do. <laughs> so this one was, 
it was it's interesting to me that you picked another one kind of like about gang violence okay. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm, I'm sure everybody noticed the the little plug i put in there about 50 cent mm-hmm. in a g unit but when they first came out you know it was like it was a lot about you know toting guns and, and killing people and blah 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 and you know it's not blah 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 because i love 50 cent but <laughs> but it's um it's one of those things that that we always see to influence our culture okay. is violence even in today's music a lot of violence influences our culture mm-hmm. and sometimes it gives them the wrong idea yes ma'am. because these lyrics are not fabricated all the time, but a lot of times embellished, time embellished <laughs> and uh, glorified yes. in the wrong ways. So um, when I spoke of, you know, coins flip over all the time, this means that you have a chance to change your life. Uh-huh. You have a chance to, you know, to, to smile instead of frown that day. Okay. You, you can find something always to smile about. You can also find something to frown about, but which one feels better? Okay. <laughs> so off me was was kind of just like take me out while you can. Okay. Or or take out or take out that attitude while you can. Okay. So it's wow. it's almost like transformation. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So the next one. Okay. <laughs> we got put phone over here for this one. <laughs> And before I read this, I just want to say that I'm a little bit of, of like a poetry rapper okay. <laughs> sometimes. So this one is a little bit of like about a rap, you know, kind of not really. I don't know. I'm gonna let y'all decide. <laughs> 16. Pop, pop. I hit the body two times. Pop, pop. Might as well keep shooting. I'm probably gonna get off. Pop, pop. This boy just fell out. Pop, pop. How do I put his light out? Pop, pop, I think I just broke a record. Pop, pop, cat won't believe it. Is that a weapon? Pop, pop, damn, where his boys at? Pop, pop, looking for another I can point this gun at. 16 stones, 16 shots. 16 stacks will get you 16 claps. If you clap back, we may have to handle that. If that shoe fits, then it must be fruition. If the time spent was only coincidence. They rather represent past due respects to our lost, stolen, or fallen lanterns. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and I think that goes without saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that was definitely directed towards police brutality in the Trayvon Martin situation, as well as you know Eric Gardner, Gardner and um, just all of the people that we've seen, you know, to die um, on camera mm-hmm. um, with physical evidence and verbal evidence and witness and it seems as if you know sometimes sometimes we get lost in the stories yes. that you know these are these are people that gave their life in, in a sense they gave their life for our causes to continue yes. and we don't necessarily see it as such because they aren't you know marching with Martin Luther King and so forth but their lives themselves are evidence that there's something we have to do yes ma'am there's something we definitely have to do as as a united front, not only as a race, but as a society and as as a as a nation. <laughs> yes, as a nation. It's very important. All right. So <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed that, but stay tuned. We have a wrap up segment. Uh, you listen to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM and we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Today we're talking about the compulsive spender. If this is you, you view spending as a form of recreation, as retail therapy, or as a way to socialize or deal with or avoid negative emotions. Unfortunately, these are all just ways to say self-medication, which is why compulsive spending so often becomes an addiction. Signs to look for include hiding your spending from others and relationship conflicts due to your spending habits. There's only one legitimate reason to spend. 
you have a genuine need of what you are buying and you've budgeted for the expense and can't afford it. If you are spending because you're angry or depressed or being driven by some other emotion, spending will only temporarily distract you from the real root of your problems and like most addictions, will often make them worse. If you can't stop compulsive spending on your own, and many people can't, get help. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Danny Ford, owner of Glen St. Motors and Paragould, strongly believes in the values of family and hard work with a commitment to the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces who keep America free. Providing sales and servicing of Chevys, GMCs, Buicks, and Cadillacs. Located at 6345 Highway 49 in Paragould. 870-565-4358. Details at glensaneparagould.com and at klekfm.org. God bless our troops. Teresa Beck, owner of Full Sun Gifts, 606 Southwest Drive in Jonesboro, is a proud supporter of KLEK. Full Sun Gifts offers a variety of gift ideas, such as candles, fragrances, bath and body products, makeup, cosmetics, skincare, and more for birthdays, weddings, holidays, and all occasions. Details at Full Sun Gifts on Facebook and Instagram and 870-974-8480. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1st, 1977. Originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha's mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. We at KLEK would like to extend a sincere thank you to all of our underwriters and sponsors. If you would like to sponsor or underwrite our programming and help us to educate, entertain, and empower the community, our number is 870 203 9951. Our email address is klek one zero two five fm at gmail.com. The website address is klekfm.org. Again, thank you for listening. Now back to community conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. 
right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I hope that you all have been enjoying the show as much as I have. I am so happy to have Ms. Micah in the studio um, as my guest and not a volunteer this time, <laughs> even though I miss her volunteering, but to have her as a guest and to be open and candid about her work. I mean, you know, people who write or dance or perform in any fashion they know what it's like to put yourself out there and be vulnerable because people may clap they may boo they may just look at you with like a deer in headlights so (laughs) you're putting yourself and your work out there for people to judge and criticize you Mm -hmm. so i thank you so much for coming here and sharing and hopefully you have inspired other people i know you have a fan with miss lachey um, thank you miss lachey and i just have to give a shout out to lachey she supports any and everybody that's yes, doing something does. positive and wonderful so um hopefully one day we'll see lachey doing her thing too in the spotlight um for making some change in society and community as a whole so Shay, i'm calling you out yes i am yes. <laughs> she's all she's always there she always shows up like it's just amazing like how can you be at three places at one time <laughs> <laughs> she's a superhero yes, <laughs> and i also want to point out that april is national poetry month so yes, this is. is also a pleasant you know surprise pleasant to have you here um, to share your work and hopefully others that may dibble and dabble in writing will take it more seriously and you know never feel that oh there's a lot of books out there but it's not your story so write your story for others to read um sometimes we have to remove the mask right move the mask Mm -hmm. and you know take a chance and step out there it's okay Mm -hmm. do i want to keep what i know and what i feel to myself or do i want to share to hopefully help somebody else um, as I've been working on some pieces for myself, I'm like, sometimes I, I catch myself editing myself, but I'm like, I don't, I need to stop being apologetic for my words because I never know who may need these words. Exactly. Um, so anyway, without further ado, I'm going to let you wrap up and, you know, share some final thoughts on the book and also, you know, being... In school, you're going to be getting to travel abroad, so that's going to open you up to even more experiences <laughs> that you can also share with other young people as well. Yes, I'm so excited for that. Um, I'm really looking, I think I'm mostly looking forward to wearing a kimono. Oh. <laughs> I'm mostly looking forward to that and also being able to express myself in Japanese. Like, I've always wanted to speak another language, awesome. and now, you know, I get the opportunity to submerge myself in their culture, and I'm very excited about this trip, and I hope that it's everything that I expect it to be, um, and especially the family that I'll be living with. But um, about the book, Provoked Expressions, please go pick up your copy. Um, I'll, I'm looking forward to having some type of signing at Barnes & Noble or somewhere on campus. Uh, please stay, you know, tuned in to my social media. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at six and bliss um, that's the number six the letter M in bliss um, and also on Facebook at Micah Simone I'm also on Goodreads so you can like see what I'm reading or what I plan to read stuff like that I'll follow you back so I can get some good ideas about what to read next Okay. Um, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Performance Rhetoric and Spoken Word Society. Oh, yes, we did. Uh, oh, did. <laughs> and since it is Poetry Month, um, I just want to say I did not forget about you. It's just finals going on. Thank you so much to everybody that's been involved. Uh, thank you for sharing your words with me and encouraging me the way that you have. Um, thank you to all the poets. Uh, thank you, Maya Angelou. Uh, yeah. The first time I ever heard poetry or understood what it was is when I was listening to her audiobook in the kitchen when my mother was cooking and I'm oh. like oh she's wonderful yes. this is awesome <laughs> I need to meet her that's my other her. mom <laughs> but um rest in peace to her and I just pray that you all enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed writing it and I'm actually bearing a part of my soul yes. <laughs> so I appreciate all of your comments um, if you have any information or any any questions or anything you can contact me at provoke provoked x at outlook.com for the book specifically um with that i'll be posting you know websites and channels and so forth that you can get the book from. thank Thank you for listening to community conversations on klek 102.5 fm a 
Jones. Program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of K-12.